This is Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. We are reconvening from a closed session. Uh, let's see, there were, we had two items. One was conference with uh, labor negotiators. There was no action taken on that. And the other was a public employee performance evaluation of our city attorney. And um, we want to thank our city attorney and his um, staff, his firm. They've been doing a great job for us and um, we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay, invocation, Mr. Weimiller. Thank you. Dear God, we thank you for many blessings that you give to the city and to the people that populate it, Lord. We pray tonight for the wisdom of our council as they consider the items before them, and uh, we hold on to your promise that uh, you will not leave or forsake us, but Lord, that you are, are with us and are, are here to be our helper and to lead us in, in, um, and guide us in making a better community. Thank you for all the blessings that you've uh, bestowed upon our, our town. And Lord, we lift up uh, today the family of po Lompoc Police Officer Miguel Grijava. Um, uh, he passed away this morning, and uh, our, our prayers and our sympathy are with his family, and uh, we as uh, colleagues are grieving uh, with the family, and just uh, we just ask for your peace to be upon that situation. We ask all this in the name of your son. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. We just wanted to give you an update on Woodstone Apartments this evening. If you recall, Woodstone, a, a developer came forward to council regarding the Woodstone Apartment Complex on Ocean Avenue, uh, proposing a tax credit project uh, to do renovation work on the apartment complex that would also turn it into a largely affordable housing complex. The council did not approve or support that project. Uh, the developer was, uh, the bond issuer that they were working, were working with at that time was denied via that bond issuer after following our TEFRA hearing. The developer then went to Cal HFA, which is a state organization, and um, they have the ability to do statewide TEFRA hearings in office at staff level. And uh, it's that's their jurisdiction, they have jurisdiction to do that. So Cal HFA did approve the project. And uh, we talked with staff there, and while they were reluctant to overrule a local decision, the state policy or direction that they follow um, address, is to address the state housing crisis. Um, so there is no official appeal process for that. I have talked to them a little bit further about what the next steps are, and it goes to the SIDLAC committee next week, and that is a committee uh, made up of the state controller, the state treasurer, and the governor's office, and they actually uh, approve the issuance of all the bonds of the projects that are coming forward, and that is on March 15th. Um, the developer further has submitted plans here at the city, so um, we have uh, project plans working through the process here, and we're taking a look at those. They may need to go to the Planning Commission, um, given some of the changes. Um, there, we can make public comment next week at, at the meeting. Um, the staff shared that, you know, they encourage us to do that. They obviously cannot opine on what that board will do. Um, but certainly we have every opportunity to call in or, or be there for public comment. Um, and certainly, you know, just like you all want to hear um, what, what, what's going on in the community, apparently that board does as well. However, I, she could not say if that would change the course of anything. So just want to provide you that update. 
In addition, I'd like to, on a different topic uh, to express my uh, sincere thanks to both California Highway Patrol and the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office today for the assistance that they provided us uh, in the situation surrounding Officer Grijalva. <laughs> they were just absolutely extraordinary in all steps in, in um, the, 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 the help and assistance that they provided on scene and then during the course of the day to provide relief uh, from patrol and other uh, dispatch and other duties that we had going on so that we had a chance to uh, basically emotionally recover from the loss. So uh, our, our just greatest appreciation to those two agencies. They were spectacular today. Thank you. Customer Starbuck. Yeah, Ms. Calvin, I want to go back to what you had just discussed. You know, that now means that this property will come off of the tax rolls. The council voted to do against it because the low income housing here is very much in excess. There's nothing for our kids to rent, but there is for low income. I understand that after that was disapproved that the county came in with CDBG and bought several uh, parcels on, on T, not parcels, but apartments on T Street and they're going to reconvert those back into low income also. Do you know anything about that? I know this is county, this isn't our CDBG, but this may be a case for us because all of a sudden we vote to disapprove one and we wind up with two. I'm not familiar. I'd have to look into that. You said that they bought apartment complexes. Yeah, I don't want to throw names Street? out, but can you share with me later? Pardon? Can you share them them later? I, it was it's herd knowledge, I'll say, but it's not anything we control. It's county CDBG that that is purchases. I understand, and you know, so all of a sudden we've what we didn't want low income. The state overturns and made low income. The county comes in, buys apartments, converts them to low income, and now we have twice what we had before we disapproved. I'm not familiar with the county, but I'll take a look into that. Ms. Galvan, do we have someone? Do we have someone that's going to be going to that hearing or calling into that hearing? We can certainly call into it. I don't know if uh, attending, you know, kind of reading between the lines. I don't know if going and attending is necessary, or but we can do one or the other. Okay. I mean, I don't know if we need the consensus of the council to do this, but I mean, I'd like my opinion. I'd like to have someone call in, be there, especially to point out the fact that 25% of our available housing in Lompoc is low income, and then give the stats for this, our surrounding community. I think the, mo the highest one is maybe 5%, 7%. We, we can certainly um, put into the record uh, any of the documentation that we did send to Cal HFA. Um, so we can make sure that uh, the director has that. She said she'd brief the board in advance of that and then put it uh, in public comment and um, certainly call in with that or or think, attend. Yeah, I think we need to do that because I, I can't say here publicly what I really think of that decision. So, and just if uh, I if I may, Mr. Mayor, yes. um, we're also looking into what it is the Planning Commission if they need to approve something, what discretion they may have, ha comparing that to what rights affordable housing developers have, and checking to see whether or not the decision that's going to be made by this board also may be something that the council may be able to challenge. We're looking into all that. We'll probably have a close session with you to see whether or not there's enough information for us to be able to do something about. Okay, good. Councilman Vega. Yeah, I also agree with that. I think that, uh, Joe, the precedence now for people to override the council and come in with state approval when we have five to six times more housing and low income than any other city, when we're trying to be sustainable and trying to raise the bar here so that we can provide opportunities. I mean, I'm not sure exactly where the city stands on this because I think we're the ones that said, hey, um, through our motions that we didn't want this. So I'm not sure exactly because they hung out a, uh, a million dollars uh, for, toward impact fees to help other projects if the city's going to um, have their own opinion on this. And I think that's where Mayor Lingle has asked are they going to come and form their own opinion and, and go along with them? Or can, do we have to make a motion to say, hey, we'd like them to give public comment to show the reasons why we, we made the decision that we did? 
because I, I hate for them to. I think we need to counsel, more council direction saying we want a body at that board meeting. I think the staff I got heard you. that. I just want to make sure that we're not going uphill here and then the city goes and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're over here saying, no, no, no. Do you get it? It's kind of like we either have to be on the same page or else don't send anybody. The, the staff would not be, <coughs> the, the, the city's position is clear because the council set that city position. The staff is not going to tell a state a position different than what the city council already directed. I got you. And I guess through you, I'm, I'm expecting kind of maybe that same message, you know, to be obviously, I think you're defending the decision the council made or you're defending the city to get the million dollars. You know, I need to like to have a clarification of that, you know. <coughs> It, it must put you right in the middle. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the issue of whether the council would approve something based on the million dollars, that's gone. That's okay. not part of gotcha. the, the, the game anymore. Okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, thank you. Um, next, I am going to do a, read a proclamation honoring the city of Lompoc for Arbor Day. Okay, this is a uh, proclamation. Whereas Arbor Day is a day dedicated to trees and their preservation, and whereas trees provide a quality living environment and enhance the social, cultural, sensory, and econom economic dimensions of our city, and whereas we must ensure the future of our urban forest for, the, for ourselves as well as our children and the children's children. And whereas the city of Lompoc is part, in partnership with, with its citizens and the Lompoc Beautification Commission, encourage all residents of the city and valley of Lompoc observe Arbor Day by planting a tree on their property or taking advantage of the city's ongoing tree planting program. Now, therefore, I, Bob Lingle, Mayor, City of Lompoc, California, do hereby proclaim Saturday, March 18th, 2017, as Arbor Day in the city of Lompoc and urge all, all our citizens to plant trees in new places and replace lost trees so that the entire city and the Lompoc Valley will continue to be the valley of distinction and beauty. Cody, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor. There you go, you wanna say a few words? Yeah, just a couple. Mr. Mayor, city council. Um, we are gonna have Arbor Day, March 18th, 10 a.m. at Beatty Park just above the gazebo, we'll have seating, we'll have snacks, coffee, juice, that type of stuff. Um, that'll all start between 9, 9.30, social time. Then the event will start at 10 o'clock promptly, and we'll honor Chuck and Barbara Arnold, Ronald K. Fairbanks, and Carol Ann Johnson. Those are our honorees this year. So we just invite everybody to come on out. And one more thing, this should be the last year that we have Arbor Day up at Beatty Park. It's getting a little bit overplanted, so we want to have room for the trees to grow. So I believe the plan next year is to move it to River Park. So we'll run, uh, put a kiosk in where the trail map will be, and we'll start planting trees along the walking path so that it's reforested because they lost a lot of pine trees this year. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now public comment. Um, this is your opportunity to speak to us on the consent calendar for up to two minutes. Seeing no one rise, we're gonna close public comment and we're gonna bring it back to the council for the consent calendar. The consent calendar consists generally of routine items that will be approved with one motion from a council member unless a council member chooses to pull an item. Does any council member wish to pull an item? Council member Starbuck. Uh, I would like to just discuss item four very briefly. A couple oh. of statements and questions on it. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead. Um, Lucille, I'm not going to catch you flat-footed here at all. When would be the most opportune time for the council to look at amending some of the parts in the general plan? Uh, the council can direct staff to move forward with the general plan amendment at any time. It would be a process uh, based on whatever your recommendation was that we would study, take it through the planning commission and then back to council. We can amend our general plan four times a year. 
I guess another question at you would be, would it be better if we just had a council workshop on the general plan if we wanted to bring our amendments or would it be best to come up here and hope that you can get a, a second and a third to move one forward? I, I'd like to maybe start looking at it. I know we're going into budget and all kinds of other things, but it's been almost a year, well, quite a while since we've looked into other parts of the general plan, new council, new thoughts. So, I mean, what would be the best process for us to take to work with you? Um, we could certainly, it would depend on what items you were interested in. Perhaps we could talk um, and see the magnitude of items that you're interested in. We might be able to bring something back to council as an informational item and uh, just point out any inconsistencies or any concerns that you might have. So an individual council member would be best to go see you about it and then well, Take we could we could look at the approach then. If you know, if there were a number of items, uh, we could consider how best to bring it forward. Okay. the The other thing, and I wanted to kind of talk to the council about this. Many years ago, when I was first elected to council. Councilmember Cost and I decided we were going to take on the monumental task of a vision statement for Lompoc. We threw our hands in the air and basically said we just couldn't accomplish what we wanted and we were trying to plagiarize and you know remember there was a long issue when we stayed with it. The other day I revisited it and you know it's the same vision statement that really says nothing. I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, here we have a general plan that goes out to 2030, but we don't have a vision for our city for 30 years out. I read the community vision, and it's really not the community. It's kind of another ho-hum gender thing. I, you know, if the council would be willing to, I think that if the Economic Development Committee is working on a tagline for the city, there's sure, certainly enough community input with them that they might want to tackle a vision statement and the community vision for the general plan. I, I just, it's pretty drab. Take a chance and read it. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure, is it, you want? Well, I mean, it's not a time to make a council request, really, but I think that we could possibly say it would be a good idea to maybe have the Economic Development Committee or some other group of people take a look at our vision statement. It's... It doesn't spark, you okay. know? It's not what we are now. Okay, so maybe someone can make a recommendation to us as where we can go with that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Starbuck. I move to accept consent calendar. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's vote. And that passes 5-0, thank you. Okay, oral communication. This is your opportunity to speak to us on anything within the purview of our council for up to three minutes. Seeing no one rise, we're gonna close oral communication, bring it to new business. This is item number five. And let me quick. Okay, item number five, a request for, amend a request for an amendment to the consultant contract for the comprehensive zoning ordinance update. And that is Ms. Breeze. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, council members. This evening, as the mayor noted, we're looking at a request for an amendment to the consultant contract and recommending that the uh, council authorize staff to um, amend our comprehensive zoning ordinance to add services to analyze food service in the industrial zone and wine ghetto as outlined in the scope of work that was provided in your staff report dated February the 20th to authorize a reallocation of $14,430 in the Lisa Weiss contract from the optional task of revising the Old Town specific plan and, or to provide alternate direction. Um, on July 7th, of 2015, the council awarded the contract to Lisa Wise Consulting for a comprehensive update of our general plan. We have been proceeding with that work and we have 
completed the first segment, which was the update of the sign regulations. So we do have a new sign ordinance that we are currently working with. The um, fact that we have had further discussion at the Planning Commission workshop in January where we started the work on the main portion of the general plan and I'm sorry of the zoning ordinance where we're looking at the districts and how the districts the uses which are permitted and um, that caused more discussion of food service in the actual uh, ghetto area. We also had discussion at another meeting at the request of one of the planning commissioners regarding using a temporary use permit uh, versus a conditional use permit and discussion on what type of food service. There's been many uh, different little types of information that has come forth, but there's never really been a comprehensive um, action taken by the city. So what we are looking at this evening is a request that we would take the scope of work presented by Lisa Wise. We would pre prepare a survey and send it to all the members of the wine industry, all those that are interested in it, to get feedback from them on what they would like to see in either a zoning or overlay, um, how they would see that industry growing and how us working on our new zoning or, uh, regulations could assist them. Um, we would have a workshop where they would be able to come and provide information to the consultant before we begin writing any regulations. It is something that um, we strongly believe needs more discussion, more open discussion. So our hope is we do have the funds in the zoning ordinance contract. And because we are not rewriting the Old Town Specific Plan, we would be transferring some of those funds from that function. So there's no requested new allocation. There's no general fund request. It is just taking funds from one portion, a little over $14,000, that's why we're asking, from one portion of the zoning ordinance and moving it into another to focus on this issue so that we can hopefully come to a consensus and when we move the um, section that has to do with uh, interest and permitted uses and methods of achieving those uses in the industrial and the wine industry forward through the Planning Commission and then on to the Council, everyone can um, at least be in agreement, have had their say, and hopefully we'll have a good consensus. So that is our request. Um, again, the money is, we have it in the contract. We're just moving it around a bit so that we can address a need. When we originally did the contract, we thought we were going to be rewriting the old town plan since we're not going to do that, uh, we would like to utilize it for this other important issue. So um, that completes, oh, I will mention that it will delay us about a month because we will have to have that workshop if you decide to do it. So Council that Mr. completes my staff report and I'm available for any questions. Council Mr. Arbuck. Yeah, Lucille, <clears throat> now, the wine ghetto, as we speak, was originally an industrial zoned property. Mm -hmm. Every winery that went in there and opened a tasting room or a retail outlet in there had to get a CUP, so they're already working in there under a CUP, right? Some of them, not all of them. So who isn't? Well, there's a number of them that are working that are doing production and they're only doing a portion of their, uh, they can do 15% of their tenant space without any CUP. So there are a number that are working in that way. There's a number of them that are just solely production. And then there are some that have turned their tenant space completely over 
into wine tasting, and they do have a CUP. So what they're wanting is, and reading just the one paragraph here, which is where it becomes confusing, we want to get a TUP to go with the CUP that modified the industrial zone. Well, that, that is the confusing part, and, and you're going to hear uh, an appeal next week, so I didn't want to go into that too much or at your next meeting. But at the last Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission did discuss whether a staff-initiated temporary use permit could be utilized and uh, whether putting food service into the industrial was within the intent of a temporary use permit, uh, which is different than a conditional use permit. So the temporary use permit is issued by staff generally for Christmas tree lots and things that a circus that's a one-time operation, that type of thing. Temporary. Temporary. Um, uh, the conditional use permit is a permit issued by the Planning Commission, and it is for a use that you want to, it could be permitted with uh, conditions so that it would fit into the area, and you would look specifically at any use that comes forward and place conditions on it so that it does not negatively impact the area. Yeah, it's just kind of confusing to me. Why would we want to look at this now and not after the appeal? Would it be, wouldn't it be better for us to, to make this decision based upon how the appeal is? It's really a separate issue from the separate appeal. Separate all the way then? Because what we're looking at is the long term. Um, whether it's a CUP or a TUP for food service, if we allow a temporary interim use, that would only be during the time period that we're working on the actual zoning ordinance. When we get to the end of the zoning ordinance, the goal is to have in place regulations that would clearly identify what is allowed, what is conditionally allowed, uh, what people can actually do without question. Okay, you know, not to continue on, I, I, I will end with my last question here. So if this was to go with a TUP, I know we're a little off subject here, but just for my own, uh, that means if you wanted to have your food service one day or a food truck one time, it would be a TUP. But if they had the conditional use permit to, and it was approved, then they would be able to use that for an indefinite period of time. Uh, generally, the intent would be until the ordinance was completed. Completed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Vega. Lucille, you know, had this been had had this been passed through the planning commission when it was presented, would we still would you still be recommending this zoning ordinance update with Lisa Weiss Consulting for the fourteen thousand dollars? Okay, the additional funds had it already been approved through the planning commission for the TUP. Um, what would have been your recommendation? I mean, after that, because would they have just been shooed in? Because, you know, what I think is happening over there is there's not a consensus here on, on what they really want to do because they're all uh, independent contractors, so individual business owners, and I think that's what the confusion is. Is Lisa Weiss Consulting going to be able to get that con kind of a consensus when it's been a while now to get some sort of a consensus on what type of food, what type of, what do we want to allow there? You know, everybody's saying, well, the TUP might be beneficial uh, as a test. Okay, I've heard that before, okay? And uh, so I'm just wondering, like, again, with Councilman Starbucks saying, hey, we're, we're going to uh, approve the additional funds, you're saying it would be necessary even if on appeal they were to prevail. Is that correct? That's correct. The... The issue of TUP versus CUP during the interim period is independent of what we're requesting. We're requesting a very comprehensive look at what the wine industry wants to see as their regulations permanently, so that when we adopt the zoning ordinance, we're gonna adopt those regulations, all inclusive, and everything should be clear. That's the goal. Is that possible to get a consensus and get them all on the same page after all this time? That's our, certainly our goal, and that's what we want to work Are we going to have barbecue pits? We're going to have sandwiches. We're going to have food trucks. 
we're gonna, is that basically gonna be kind of, I'm okay with whatever works, okay, and, and, and is within the ordinance. I'm not making fun of anything. I'm actually, you know, thinking that alcohol, if you're gonna drink, you do need to, to have, be able to eat. I think it just goes along with it. I'm just trying to see where our money's being wisely spent. I think everyone has agreed that food service in the, with the wine is a good thing. What we're trying to determine is how to get there so everyone's on the same page and how to make it move forward in the most expedient and clear manner so that mm -hmm. it is Will $14,000 do that? Yes, that's, that's the intention <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, okay, but I had to ask. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Joe, you're okay? Okay. Hmm. Patrick. I just wanted to add to the response to Councilmember Vega's question. As hopeful as we are that we would get consensus from the industry, I honestly haven't seen them demonstrate the ability to bring consensus forward. So it'll, while it's our hope, it'll also be a delightful surprise. I think more the reason for going through and ut utilizing the consultant is so that with lacking consensus, at least we can make sure that all parties are heard from and present the what may be competing concepts uh, in a way that that would enable this body to be able to make a policy decision. But I think the more the more realistic expectation is it's going to fall to you to make the final decisions about what food service looks like in in the um, in in either that particular industrial area or in other industrial areas uh, because so far, the industry itself hasn't demonstrated this ability to reach consensus on its own. Yeah, Council. I got you. I have one. Uh, Councilor Mosby. <clears throat> how, how many times has this been, so to say, attempted or offered to the uh, property owner? Um, prior to the city starting the zoning ordinance update, it was offered um, three times three different occasions. And who was gonna pay for it at that time? The property owner. Okay, so the fourth time we're potentially gonna, and granted this includes not just the ghetto but also the other industrial area. And it, it, it brings me a point of zoning, when you have zoning, and it re reminds me back in 1978 when that property was annexed in and, and the then councilwoman Lefkowitz said that there was a gift from God to get that piece of property because we we're in such need of industrial property and such need of jobs. And seeing what's happened to the ghetto and understanding and following the history as it's developed and it, to be the incubator to companies coming in and then expanding into our old town. And there, there's probably at least 20 places in town that you could have food service that are vacant right now. So what disservice are we going to do to the, the places that you could? And then you're going to provide it over there. You're going to make those less valuable. Um, so I guess conversely, are we going to, Maybe we could do a study so we can put industrial in places where allowed food service. Is it just like the zoning seems to just be we, we set up, we get a design, we get a plan, and then we go one direction and then we just keep going this other direction and just make it a free for all. I mean, that's kind of what's become. Um, you know, industrial facilities are built, you know, as we're going to find out, as industrial facilities. You know, they, they had a couple of people going to the bathroom a day. You know, there's no landscape plan parking plan is for that. So it's just, we keep putting band-aid after band-aid after band-aid on facilities. And I, you know, I was at the meeting at the, uh, the it, it, it was very threatening. And they were offended that we did a sign program before we did this. But they were offered three times to do this if they would pay for it themselves. If the landlord would pay for it themselves in the ghetto anyways. So it just seems, you know, cautiously as we go down this road, why, why are we having zoning? I mean, when you see the rental rates that are in industrial, we have a huge shortage of industrial. Industrial rates, you're getting three to four times what they're getting on H and Ocean in retail spots because of this. And now we're putting more, and we're going to put more of a demand on that, and we're allowing, I mean, what, what, what can't they do? If they could do food service and industrial, I mean, I guess they'd be limited on a level of recreation, but you, you basically have a, 
A through Z zoning going on. So it's just, you know, I, I'm all for people having property rights, but I think we need to be cautious in understanding that if we're, we're, we're throttling certain, certain places like this and others we want to embrace and allow free for all, and we're getting out of balance. And that's kind of what I've said in the general plan that we have a lack of balance in, in that aspect. Thank you. I don't think there was a question there. Mr. Weinmiller. And in response to Council Members Mo Mosby's concerns, I think that's exactly why we're bringing this item forward. Those are the issues that need to be vetted out, and we believe that's the way to vet those out is with the assistance of a, of a consultant who's got um, plenty of experience in facilitating those very policy questions. Councilman Osborne. Ms. Breeze, for clarification, it's not that you're not updating the Old Town specific plan, it's that it's being incorporated into the zoning in a general way instead of being a separate plan itself. So that's why the money is not being spent on updating a very specific Old Town plan, correct? Well, the, the regulations in the Old Town specific plan are currently in the zoning ordinance. So they will be evaluated and reviewed as we are doing all of the districts, but we will not have a separate plan. Okay, and then secondly, I appreciate you um, evaluating and seeing this as an opportunity to do the research necessary for us to better evaluate both the market demand that we're told exists as well as the best way to go about allowing food in industrial areas. And I don't see it just as in the wine ghetto, but there are several areas locally in other communities where there is food in the industrial areas for those entities that have businesses there and it's hard to get somewhere into town to get a lunch. So having a sandwich shop available to a welding service and a car repair salesman and, and a furniture repairman who is in walking distance is just as important as considering whether or not there is something to eat while drinking your alcohol. So I appreciate that and I, I, I hope that it incorporates it across all the industrial areas so that it's something that is more flexible because it is market driven. If the market says it should be there, it'll be there. If the market doesn't support it, it won't exist. So I appreciate that. Councilman Starbuck. Yeah. Listen, one last question here. Now, this will add a month delay. When would the completion of the zoning ordinance be then? Oh, we're looking at the beginning of 2018, the first quarter. The first quarter of 2018 then. Okay, Ms. Breeze, I just wanna, I think the, bring this forward is very timely. I wanna thank you for bringing it forward. Um, I'm hoping that we can come to some sort of uh, an agreement with the necessary parties, but we will wait and see. But I, I agree that I think having an independent consultant that I'm assuming has knowledge in these areas will definitely help us. So I think, uh, I wanna thank you again for bringing it forward and I think it's very timely. Thank you. Public comment. Seeing no one rise, we're gonna close public comment and bring it back to council. For the discussion or I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I move to support uh, staff recommendations to allot the money towards doing a comprehensive zoning update regarding the wine ordinance. Okay. I'll go ahead and second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Let's vote. And that passes 5 0. Thank you. Okay. Uh, written communications. Nothing, sir. Oral communications, this is your last time opportunity to speak to us for up to two minutes. Finally, my goodness. Hello, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, bring up one thing and that's regarding uh, the uh, council, the ad hoc committee, marijuana ad hoc committee, um, and also coffee with Bob. Um, Mr. Mayor, you proposed uh, your next coffee with Bob session that you may be discussing primarily about marijuana. Um, and you, um, 
ask that I possibly could maybe find a doctor that maybe ask, be able to ask some answer questions. And um, my question is that um, with the marijuana ad hoc addressing this, um, is there a place that we could possibly do something like that on a larger scale for more people to be involved in other than at the coffee house? Um, that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Okay, well, I want, to, I want to address that real quick since we have a little bit extra time. Um, first of all, I said I'll, I'll discuss that at the, a future meeting. I'm not sure I'm gonna have it at the next one, but it'll be at a future meeting. Correct. I'll, I'll Sorry concentrate that. on that. But um, I would recommend that all these parties, we had a pretty good discussion, pretty good turnout at my last coffee, and I would really suggest that these people attend the ad hoc committee meetings. I don't know, were you at the first one? Yes, okay. sir. Um, Councilmember Osborne, do you wanna have a comment on that or? Joe, I'd appreciate you share that with me. That is part of my goal for the agenda for the next is to bring some individuals who are professionals in the industry to speak to each of the issues, both from a pro and a con situation. So if you provide that with me, I'll, it'll help in my organizing. I'm meeting with several individuals trying to find a time where we could get them all together in the same space. So that would be hugely helpful to have that passed on and happy to work with you on that suggestion. Great. Thanks, yeah. Joe. So, and I agree, the little coffee shop is, you can only handle so many people, it's noisy. Um, that's why I usually don't have meetings of that type um, in a place like that, but the best place for them to be heard is at the ad hoc committee meeting. The ad hoc committee meeting is going to be making their recommendation to the city council, so. Right, I understand that. Okay, but thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Joe, did you just get married? Um, not yet. Oh, I thought you got married. I was gonna congratulate you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, anyone else? Seeing no one rise, we're gonna close our old communication, bring it back to the council for Request comments and meeting reports. We'll start with Council Member Mosby. I just forgot to say this the last time, but we didn't have any power outages the last time I talked to with all that big wind storm. We kind of forgot the winds over with, but I want to you know, give a shout out to all the electrical guys for their proactive work and the urban forestry guys for getting those lines cleared before. They, uh, and you watch TV and uh, you see how many outages they had down in the Santa Barbara area and all around and it's, it's nice that, um, you know, probably, hopefully our biggest windstorm of the, of the year, we, we got through it without the difficulty. So good job, you guys. Councilmember Starbuck. I have no reports. Councilmember Vega. Nothing to report. Councilmember Osborne. I attended the Tri-County Broadband Committee meeting and they have had a renewed grant, so it will continue to move forward, the joint, um, movement within the county to try and provide a broadband connection across the county as well as uh, Lompoc, and we do have staff working on that, so I will continue to participate where I can. I attended Hancock's Lompoc Valley Community Center Spring Gathering, and I really appreciated uh, President Walter's focus and spotlight on Lompoc and all they're doing on the campus to provide to the local community. In fact, one of the highlights was introducing all of the student government representation, and it all this year across the entire Hancock campus, all of the representation is students from Lompoc, so that was very impressive. Um, I toured the TAP TV and KPEG radio station because um, it had relocated since I had seen it and the time it was um, when I went through LLV, so it was nice to see our, our new facility and know how well it is running. And then I attended the Fund for Santa Barbara's Brown Bag Activist Lunch that is hosted here locally. It is a fund that is run out of Santa Barbara, but they're looking to focus on North County as well. It's the first Tuesday of every month, and it's held at the Anderson Rec Center, and you can come and participate with other community members and discuss issues going on in the community. And the fund has books available to check out and resources that you might be able to apply for grants, and it's free, so you just bring your own lunch or something to snack on and have a discussion with other community members. So I highly recommend that to other individuals. Finally, I wanna thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting Dance Lompoc this past weekend and raising funds for several local nonprofits and bringing attention to them. 
Last but not least, there was a, a thank you letter sent to me with regards to our fire department as a result of these last storms. So Angie Hamlin says, I want to thank you all very much for going above and beyond the call of duty service. I received this last wind rainstorm. Our rental house sunken living room was flooding, so I called the city storm helpline to get sandbags. The automated system sent me to 1300 West Laurel, which then route, rerouted me to station one. I arrived and asked for sandbags as I explained my situation to Captain Fetterman. Our tenants already removed 20 gallons of water from the living room, who then told me he would send a team of men to meet me at the property to assess the situation. They then said they would have a truck arriving with sandbags and would tarp and sandbag it for me. Wow, I felt awkward not doing it myself, but I knew they would make sure it was done properly and after hours of back and forth in the storm, I had confidence knowing the house was protected from further damage. I know this is so minor compared to saving a life, but I am so thankful and grateful for our first responders and this team of men that are so kind and contained my situation. So she wanted our community to know the above and beyond that our department goes to to support the community, and I wanted to share that after receiving it. And so finally, uh, the Fire and Ice Ball that supports the Lompoc Fire Foundation is March 18th at 5 p.m. at Sage Restaurant. So buy your tickets. You can go to LompocFirefightersFoundation.com and buy your tickets. So good reason to support them. So that's my report. And you had three finalies in there. Did I? Yeah, I but that's okay. trying to close them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I want to concur with Councilmember Mosby on the great job our staff did during the storms. Um, he's right. We, we had no power outages. A few trees went down, um, branches, but or I think, well, one tree, definitely one large, um, um, what's that? Stone, stone vine, yeah. But that was actually uprooted, I guess. It must have been, uh, it wasn't really by the winds, it was just uprooted. So you guys did a great job. Same thing with our power companies. Um, okay, so I attended many meetings, none at city expense, but I do want to sort of highlight one of them. This past Saturday, I was at the opening of Girls Softball at uh, Thompson Park, and the community was just so amazed at how Thompson Park turned out. Um, they had, some of them hadn't even been there, didn't know we were redoing it. it was, they were just, that's all the whole discussion was. It wasn't about the girls starting softball, it was all about how beautiful the park was. So uh, again, this was a small part on city staff. Um, the city council, we should take a little hand because we authorized some money, but it was mostly on the volunteers, the community that volunteered. Uh, just again, an idea of what a great community we have right here. Okay, um, I do have one council request. It's been six months since we redid the council dais with the seating of the staff down below. Um, I, thought, I, th I thought at that time, and it still was a, an attempt at possibly doing something different, but I'll be honest with you, in my opinion, it's, it's not working. This council chambers, this dais is not designed for this situation. I, I can't see when the light goes on. Uh, they have to raise their hand, get my attention. Um, when city administrator is talking to council member Vega, he's, he has to talk you know, with his back to you. Same thing with anyone on this side, council, speaking with council member Mosby. Um, they have their speak, they have their backs to the speaker over there. Unfortunately, it, like I say, it was worth a try, but I just don't think it's working. So I would like to request that we just bring it back for discussion and uh, see if we want to continue it or if we want to try something different. So bring it back for discussion at a, at a future council meeting. That would be my request. I'll need a second and a third for that. I'll second. Okay. Um, do I have a third? If you want to do discussion, but I don't want to take action, I'll, I'll give you the third if I'm there. Well, the discussion may go towards action, though. Well, having had lots of non-thirds, I'm not going to play the game. I'll go ahead and give you a third, so I'd like to discuss it. I mean, okay. I, I see validation in your points, but then again, I also remember why we went to this arrangement also, so. Okay, and we'll discuss that, because, okay. Okay, good, so we have a second and a third. We'll bring it back at a future time. If there is nothing else, this meeting is adjourned to a regular city council meeting of March 21st at 6.30 p.m. Good night and thank you.